word at the moment is growth mindset. It's basically the fact that children should learn and understand and know that it's okay to fail and get things get things wrong. It takes it sometimes you can get things a thousand times wrong before you get it right and children need to know that it's okay to get things wrong. Usually in maths and English they used to get in ticks and things like that that's right and wrong. But with things like technology a lot of things go wrong before they go right. As teachers, we often do lessons about growth mindset, having your mind open, being it's okay to fail. But for some reason, when it comes to technology and education, um, some teachers have this mindset of, you know me in education, you know me in technology, I, I'm not very good with the technology, I don't like computers, and for some reason that's accepted. But if we're telling children they have to have this growth mindset in all lessons, then surely as teachers we have to have the same thing, especially when it comes to technology, because that's where things are going at the moment. Um, basically don't be scared by trying something new. Apps and technology, it's supposed to be starting off with baby steps. You take your first step, then you get better and better at an app or a, um, a piece of software or a piece of technology. And then where it goes from there is up to you. But it's, it's made to be user-friendly. It's made to be accessible for everyone. And the best way to get around this is just by having a try, having a go of something. If there's an app you're interested in, download it, get it and have a go. If there's a piece of software you want to know about, go and ask someone that uses it. Find out of somebody you maybe know that has used it in class or in school. And that's the best way around. Around it. Got to play on playing what interests the children. Children love technology. If you have a written test, a reading test, for example, a comprehension test, and it's written down, the children will do it. Put that written test on an iPad or on a screen or something that they're interested in, some technology. Straight away you're getting rid of that barrier um, and children think it's not reading comprehension, it's not a mundane lesson, it's something a little bit different. When you're using math, you use games and uh, things that they're interested in just to engage the learning and they'll, they won't even notice that that's what's happening. I use Angry Birds in maths for a quick 10 seconds, I put a game up, they have a quick go and I can teach place value for a good 10-20 minutes off something that they've done themselves. Part of the national curriculum is evaluating your own spoken language, but quite often as teachers we don't give them the opportunity to do this, and the best way to do it is by recording it and then watching it back. Because children notice and spot things, we talk about things in reading comprehension, about intonation, about changing the pitch and volume of your voice, but they don't, if they don't listen back to their voice they won't know what it sounds like and some of them are quite surprised to hear what they actually sound like and then you can go back, re-evaluate and record again, kind of like we had any imp edit and improve writing, you go through, you do it again and you go back. 
back and you, you, re, you can re-record and that's kind of what I use with videos. What I like to do when we're doing a writing topic, I give the ch children a chance and an opportunity to record their work. So at the end, most children now, a lot of kids want to be YouTubers and they want to interact with social media and just by putting a camera in front of them and getting a chance to perform and record some of their work, they're desperate then to get to the end of the week because they know that I'm going to record something, put a bit of music on and then share it with the class and the rest of the school. Yeah, so it's all about getting parents on the side. The school is a community, and the more the parents feel part of that community, the better for you and for the school. So when you're looking at technology and social media, bring parents in, explain it, what you're doing and what, where you, what the school's idea and thoughts of, of where they're going to go with social media. Because social media has this, in school, in, with e-safety lessons, it's always doom and gloom, social media is a bad thing. But really, social media is a good thing, and it's up to us as parents and teachers to show the good side of social media, as well as the bad side which we still have to tackle but if you put focus on the bad side the children have a negative view if you focus on the good side and and the bad side the children understand there's a balanced view of both what's of what social media is and both sides of social media and social media can be an amazing thing for children speaking to parents sometimes you'll find out the parent will have a really interesting job whilst they can actually help your school in some sort of way um be it with their with their business or their job and it's really nice to get uh, people to come into school and also challenge those gender stereotypes because when we've had people come in before they think scientist as a male when we've had a scientist come in that's a female they think an engineer is a male with an engineer comes a female they, th they think a dancer as a female but we've had a, a male come in so it's challenging those gender stereotypes so children can look up to these people that come in and they're, they're a parent of one of the children at school so for the whole rest of the week or whenever a parent comes in they're kind of walking around on like, like, like rocking an air going oh my parents come in and they've shared some, uh, something they do at home With technology in the classroom, before you go and purchase anything else, or a bunch of iPads, all this extravagant technology, make sure that what you've got in your classroom that you're using correctly first. I've been into schools where they've got an iPad and literally all they use it for is internet for searching for something. It does so many things that they don't use. Same with the, uh, the panels. If you have just a panel and you just use it as a, a large whiteboard, it's not you're not getting the best. It's like driving a Ferrari but going at 10 miles an hour all the time. When I came in here, I found a radio station in the cupboard. A, a five grand radio station. I found uh, 30 DS's, like Nintendo DS's. For some reason, schools, they have so much tech that they think, they hear a buzzword, they buy it, they bring it in, they don't know what to do with it, they put it in a cupboard. And then someone else comes in, they buy something, they put it in a cupboard, and then you end up, you've got thousands of pounds worth of stuff that you think, if they just would have used that two years ago, that would be embedded throughout the whole school now, and it being being used. So with technology in classrooms, one of the first things you should do is audit what you've got first because sometimes you can have some amazing resources that are stored away in a cupboard that you just don't know about because what sometimes schools can do is they hear a buzzword, they hear iPads or some piece of technology, they buy it in, someone can use it or someone's not quite sure, someone that can use that technology then leaves and then it's left at a school where you can't use it. So integrate what you've got first because you could have some great resources just lying in your school, integrate that first before you think about buying other technology in. Going back to social media, as a teacher, there's so many teachers and leaders in education sharing their thoughts and ideas freely on Facebook and on Twitter. So if you go on Twitter, follow a few people that you're interested in, you've seen in CPD sessions, and look at the suggestions that it gives you, because you'll see who they follow as well. And click on those and follow those and look at what... Um, what things because they're always putting up ideas and thoughts and uh, lessons and things I've done this before as well I've seen a teacher that I've seen before followed them on Facebook and Twitter and looked at their ideas and then made some of those ideas my own in my own classroom one of the best resources I've ever used is something that's free basically it's Skype and Skype have a website called Skype in Education and they have five key areas that you can use as a teacher. I want to talk quickly about Mystery Skype and Virtual Field Trips because those are the two that I use more than anything. Um, so you, you log on using your own Skype email address. And I'm going to talk about virtual field trips. So a virtual field trip is a way of connecting your children to somewhere in the world. So rather than going on a field trip to the North Pole, which would be lovely, budget-wise we're not going to be able to do that. We can bring the North Pole to the classroom. So what you do 
There's a website full of scientists and speakers waiting to speak to you. It's just a case of trying to find them. So you look through the filter, you search for the subject, and you look at what your, what your topic is. For example, save your topics animals. You'd search animals and you can see what organisations are ready to connect with you via Skype to talk about animals. So you've got a little uh, explanation underneath each picture. You click on what you want. And then you've got more about the, um, so this is what Ocean's Day. So you read a lot about what's going on in the day. You click the, the animal, the English, because sometimes the language as well is a barrier. Make sure they speak English. And then this is a lesson that we did. Our year sixes were doing a lesson on the North Pole. And the day after I found out that the year six was doing a lesson on the North Pole, I had them speaking to a guy live from the North Pole. He turned the camera on to where he was based at that time. So the children were straight away they had this access to a world of knowledge rather than the teacher just me talking about um, the North Pole they had a guy who was there in the North Pole talking directly about what the weather was like it was, one of the children said what's the weather like so he said I'll show you it went, turned the camera around and it wasn't snowing so they were quite shocked it wasn't snowing but then he had a conversation about the um, the environment and why it wasn't snowing at this part of, part of the year so it's so powerful because straight after that lesson the kids were buzzing with ideas the other thing to do is, I like doing, is mystery Skype. So geography can be, it's one of those topics that teachers sometimes struggle to think, how do I make geography look a bit different, what can I do? Well, mystery Skype is kind of a, a game where you play against another school. So you connect with a teacher somewhere in the world, and you, you, you send messages to each other beforehand, and then what happens is you, you Skype the other school, and your school has to guess where that school is before that school guesses where your school is using yes and no answers. So you search for the filters at the age group that you're looking for. And this is a teacher that I connected with. You find more about the teacher. You set up a time. You've got to be very careful about the time difference because I accidentally uh, Skyped someone when she was still in bed. But that's another story. So look at the time difference. And then there's my class from a couple of years ago, speaking to a class in Kansas. And using yes and no questions, our class guessed where the other class was before they guessed where we were. But what they didn't realise is they're using maps, they're using geographical knowledge, they're using yes and no questions, they're trying to think about what questions could they ask before they ask them back. They're then using the children's uh, questions that they ask us to then ask back to them. And it's just a really powerful way of teaching geography. just want to add something about this as well. Um, with Once you've connected afterwards is where the magic happens I believe because this school was in Kansas we were in Bolton at the time our topic was the Wizard of Oz so in the end we ended up writing stories for children in Kansas about the Wizard of Oz while they've written some stories for us about Robin Hood I think it was so you, then you build up that relationship afterwards and as teachers and educators and it's then again sharing ideas you don't have to use although I love my active panel you don't have to use this you can use an iPad you can use a laptop as long as you've got basic internet connection and a Skype password you're, you're ready to go. So um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is something called Skype fishing. It's basically just ask people, can we Skype you? So, so this is Peter J. Black. So about, a, about three years ago, I read this amazing book called Urban Outlaws. It was all about technology and about kit, kind of a bit like James Bond, but like a, young, uh, like a young version of James Bond. And I had a class heavy of girls. Now, my class at the time, they were quite tired of getting saved in books, being a princess and being quite boring really. But this book, the female characters in this book are just as powerful and as strong as the male characters, which is exactly why I chose this book. So on the off chance, I, quit, I sent him an email, I think it was via Twitter, said, is there any chance we could talk to you? And I was really surprised because a couple of days later he said yes. And then within a week, the children reading and enjoying the book, he spoke live to our class and they couldn't believe they were speaking to some person some author that they were talking, that they were reading his book and enjoying his book all week and then being able to speak directly back to him and he was there talking to them and he, I really enjoyed it, the kids loved it but you could tell um, Peter J. Black loved it as well. All right, so my name is Peter J. Black and I'm an author and I've written um, a series of five books so far um, called The Urban Outlaws. And the Urban Outlaws are about a group of gadget-savvy kids who live uh, deep underground in London uh, in a secret bunker. And they use gadgets and hacking and things like that to break into buildings. So I've been writing um, that, which the first one was released in 2013. 
and I've been uh, writing flat out ever since. And now I'm writing on the sci-fi side of things. So I write about gadgets and science fiction. Right. So how you first contacted me? I think I think you first contacted me via Twitter, and I think you sent me a message from your uh, account, and then we exchanged direct messages because you have to follow each other. And I think uh, remember you saying suggesting that we talk via Skype or I talk to the classroom via Skype and you were saying about how, um, you know, we could direct it to your class specifically. Um, and I was all for it. You know, it's, um, it's great. So my experience with Skype was only positive, actually. Um, you know, like I was saying before, I kind of, I'm a fan of technology anyway. Um, I write about technology. Um, the thing I liked about it, most of all is because we could yeah if i do a school visit i talk to hundreds of kids at once and that's great and it works well but to be able to talk to a class of 30 or so kids in one go is absolutely fantastic and um i'm all for it i'm all positive for it really with regards to teachers and authors connecting via Skype, it is again, I think you need to embrace the technology. And um, like I said, the fact that you can, from my point of view, you know, if, if I want to see a school, if I wanted to come up to Bolton or anywhere, Manchester, or anywhere like that, I mean, you're talking for me, I live down right down the south coast. So you're talking about a six, five, six hour journey. I have to stay in a hotel overnight. Um, and, you know, you're talking two or three days possibly um to do uh, an event you know an event up north um so the fact that you can literally switch on skype and within seconds you're connected and you're in that classroom and you can see the kids and you can interact with the kids um and do competitions and things like that and tie in other things to it is absolutely fantastic and like i said that the time saving is is huge And the beauty of Skype is because you're not stuck to a, a certain town or place, you can Skype someone, anyone in the world, anywhere in the world. So we did a lovely book called A River by Mark Martin, who's this really amazing Australian author. Again, I kind of put my rod out and sent him a quick message and said, any chance we could talk to you? So he said, yes, of course you can. And then within a couple of weeks, my children were speaking to uh, Mark Martin, who'd just been on Australia Today or something, on a TV show the day before, speaking live directly to my kids. Okay, another author that we spoke to is Mick Manning and Britta. Um, they did this amazing book called Stone Age Bone Age. Again, we connected them, connected with them via Skype, and they were so impressed with our children and their and their sentences and their work that the week after, they did a live art lesson. So they were being taught how to paint one of the mammoths directly from the artist that did the painting within the book. So we had a whole class all sat there watching um, Britta paint one of the woolly mammoths and then she sent it to us and it goes and there's the original picture that she did and she also sent us some signed books as well and again this was all free i think the reason why authors like doing these skype sessions is because they can speak directly to their target audience children love their books the uh, authors get to speak directly to their target audience and get instant feedback straight away and they get to see children who the books are intended for enjoy their books and, and talk to them okay so with going back to social media um, when we use Twitter, we tweet authors, quite famous authors like Anthony Horowitz, and said, could you have a look at our poem, share our poem. We did a poem, shared our poem with him, and we, he gave us instant feedback, please share our poem. And he said, this is really lovely, well made, and the words of performance are perfectly judged. Now, this is an author that the children really enjoy, really love his books. We've got a poet called Brian Moses. And then there's a, a lady called Elizabeth Batt, who writes for the New York Times, that we sent our video to. And she put, she did an article about us in the New York Times, just from sending a video on YouTube. And then again, I put it on Facebook, and and, we, and then within a week, we had 167,000 views or something on our poetry video. And the beauty of this was we then it got translated into French by the French government. So they translated our our lesson, our poetry lesson that we did on a rainy day in Bolton on a Wednesday afternoon it was. They translated it directly into French so the children in France could then enjoy our poem. And then they also sent us some pictures of our lesson being taught in France and now it's used in the Paris educational system every year, some of the planning that we did. So then we watched the film Blackfish because we did some topic on the killer whales. We watched the film Blackfish and I fishing as well. I sent uh, Samantha Berg an email saying can we speak to you? So a week later 
after watching the film she spoke to us live from Alaska again using Skype and we used a small laptop in the in the classroom and she spoke live to us from Alaska in a roundabout way I'm going to skip through this bit but this is this is Sajid Krim he's the one that paid for us to go to European Parliament and that's us going so from a Skype lesson that I did on that Wednesday afternoon we ended up going to European Parliament, sat right at the front there, debating with scientists that we spoke to on Skype a few weeks before. And we had caviar in the lounge, and we ended up going to, we ended up going to meet MPs and famous people while we were there. And this was from a Skype lesson. Now, when I first did this Skype session, I had no idea that any of this would happen. But that's when the best things happen, things with free tech, things with lesson ideas that go like that. It's interest of the children first, whatever happens afterwards, all the positive stuff is a byproduct. It's the same with getting technology for your classroom, it's the same with whatever you do. Children first, whatever happens afterwards is a byproduct. Eventually, with all the work that we did around Blackfish, we ended up actually changing European parliamentary law. Now I'm not saying if you do your Skype session next Monday that a few weeks later you're going to be on in 10 Downing Street or you're going to be on the news, but I'm not saying you're not. It could happen. When I first did this lesson a few months, few years ago, I had no idea that our lesson on poetry, that this would happen. But from sharing it online and from a sequence of quite extraordinary events, it did happen. So it could happen for you. But as long as you focus on engage, engaging the children and get the best out of the children with whatever tech you've got in your classroom, that's the main point. That's, everything else is a byproduct. You hear off word of mouth mostly. I don't usually see it on, like, sent to me. I get it now. I get people sending me stuff, but it's you don't know it's there. But because you don't, not a lot of people don't know it's there. When you do know it's there, you're one of the few people that are in the know. So when you apply for something, there's less people applying than you actually think. When I went for the board, I thought you'd have thousands of people applying for it. We had like what 200, I think, max, including all the videos. I thought we'd have no chance. I thought you'd have all sorts, but. A lot of people think that, which is why not many people are entering these competitions. And if you don't win, you've got a great video, you've, got a, you've, you've done some work with your class, you've got a purpose for writing. And if you don't win, then you then reinforce that, oh, we didn't win, that's fine, you don't win everything, and you go along and you, you enter something else. Okay, so three top tips. Number one, get your parents and colleagues on board first. Number two, audit what resources you have in your school. You never know what you might have before you decide what you need. And number three, use free resources such as Skype because you never know what might happen from it. Hundred percent get the children involved because I, I, I think you can see when a teacher's made it or a class has made it with the teacher, there's a big difference between someone saying, oh, you say that, that, that. And you, can, you can completely tell the difference. No, with Jamie, he's not, he came up with half that stuff, which is why he just reels it off. Well, I would just say, try your best. It doesn't matter if you win or lose, just have fun. It's really good. This board is like, it's touch screen and it's... I just have no words for it. It's, it's just too amazing for me to say anything. PlayStation VR because I haven't actually got any VR stuff at my house because and it looks really cool and I just can't but I just can't wait I have, I, I have no words <laughs> probably Disneyland in Florida because like if I visited in VR it would be like I was actually there like I could go on like all the rides, like Expedition Everest, uh, Seven Horse Mine Train, stuff like that. Got him in here and I just used to spend every break and lunchtime with him just messing with iPads and apps and saying, test this, Jamie, like, what, do you reckon we'd get this in class next lesson? How good to use this? And he sat right there and right in front of the board and it was like my, my light switch. It used to, do you know that when you have to collaborate, you used to get up and do it for me all the time. But because of that, he just straight away was 
Birmingham is on it. So with free technology to get for your school, use your connections, use your parents. We won the Tech Factor last year. We were able to spend lots of money on just technology in school. And the way I found out about it was one of the parents works for BT, sent an email to our school um, with like a flyer. Our head teacher saw the, saw the leaflet, thought who would be interested in that, sent it to me, then we entered it. And then a couple of months later, I had almost like a blank check to buy loads of different things. We bought VR, I think we bought PCs, we bought all sorts, but that's just from using the connections that the parents have. The best free technology I've ever got, believe it or not, is my active panel. Um, you can have the best lessons, the highest um, technology, but if children can't see your lesson in the first place, then there's, it's no, there's no point. But with this board, the children will be able to see in all its glory that it was meant to be. So when the children create a video, a poetry video, or anything they've created, we film it, they can then see it in what, like, almost like a cinema in their classroom. So when we won the active panel, I didn't realise we'd get the Android system as well, which is great because I'm able to download lesson plans, get my lessons ready while my really slow laptop at the time was still booting up, which means the children can come straight in, start their learning, and then when, when my laptop's ready, I can then swap screens over. Word of mouth. I was on Facebook searching through, looking at some lessons ideas from other pages and popped up a um, free Promethean board. So I had a click, I looked at the information, I thought that's right up my street. So within about the next day with Jamie, um, we recorded it using the ideas from the children in the class. We popped out of class for half an hour, we entered the competition and then that was it. Um, and then a few months later we found out that we'd actually won a board and they came in and installed this butte in my, right behind me. So when it comes to competitions like the Promethean Grant, just enter. If you win, you've got a new active panel. If you don't, you've still got the same board that you had before. You don't have to use green screen on all different types of technology. Creativity can just come from a small idea, from a poem, from something quite simple that you've decided with the children. But use whatever you've got within the classroom, use whatever creativity and what ideas you've got in the classroom to help you with your application. Okay, so you're here for advice on how to get free technology in your school. My advice is just enter, because you never know, you can end up with one of these things in your classroom.